But will this latest impeachment push end like the rest and backfire in the faces of Democrats, namely in Nancy Pelosi's face? Let's bring in tonight's panel to discuss this. With us, GOP pollster and strategist for Ted Cruz's 2016 presidential campaign, Chris Wilson is here with us. Also with us, senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research and former Marine Gunnery Sergeant Jesse Jane Duff. And finally, but last, last but not least, Princeton University lecturer and author, Dr. Lauren Wright. All right, guys, let's get started here and uh, let's take a look at real quickly uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and her warning, it seems like, like to other Democrats. In a letter to members of her caucus on Sunday, Pelosi called President Trump's phone call a, quote, violation of our national security. She said Trump will enter a grave new chapter of lawlessness if he decides to block the whistleblower from testifying in front of Congress on Thursday. She also promised a whole new stage of the investigation if Trump doesn't cooperate. First to Chris on this. Chris, we know Nancy Pelosi has been trying to balance the two factions of her party, the Democrats who won impeachment, the this others who realized that impeachment. After having Hold on, we'll get to Peter. We'll get to we'll get to Adam Schiff in just a minute. But, you know, do you think anything has materially changed now based on this or are Democrats just grasping at straws, hoping that there's going to be enough there here to really pursue this investigation in full? Well, the only thing that I think that's materially changed is right now they kind of have a bank shot where there are a lot of Democrats that would like to see Joe Biden come off from the leader's position in the presidential race. And so they see the ability to maybe go after Trump with something that also has the effect of taking out Joe Biden. And really, when it gets down to it, this is just the latest Democrat scandal of the week. Last week, it was the Kavanaugh charges. And let's talk about those again. This week, it's son of Russian meddling in Ukraine. And when it gets down to it, I mean, this is really it, from overall what we know about the conversation right now, which, as you mentioned, we just learned that the, the so-called whistleblower wasn't even and did not hear the conversation firsthand. What we really know about it is that this is nothing more than a conversation with a world leader that it's, it's tantamount to a lot of the conversations we know that President Obama had back in his time. And I would say the one challenge I think that exists here for Democrats is they continue to push and set new standards for uh, for President Trump and want the transcripts released, is if they refine the rules and now say that, oh, we cannot have private conversations with world leaders, or if you ask for an in-depth investigation of corruption, that the, that the Congress needs to know about that, then the next Democrat president has to live under those same rules, and that creates real challenges. Yeah. And, and that's, but you know, yeah. the whole thing around Hunter around Biden's son here is, I think, the, the bigger scandal. And it's one that people in D.C. have known about for a long time. You've got Ukraine. You've got another scandal with China, I think, that you're going to hear talked about in the coming weeks. And as you mentioned, his lack of qualifications to be able to fly over with then Vice President Biden and come away with a billion-dollar investment is, uh, I mean, there is clearly a, a smoke here, and that question is whether there's fire underneath it. That's the question, right, Lauren? There's a lot of smoke here, but is there fire, quote-unquote fire, to actually bring forth a real impeachment? I just don't think that the impeachment angle is very probable at this point. A lot of people look at Nancy Pelosi's letter and they see something more aggressive. They think that language is significant. I actually think she's hedging quite a bit. And I think what we can mm -hmm. probably all agree is that we need more information about this. Even the president himself just said, uh, you'll see the transcript and you'll see what it is. I find this very, very disturbing. I don't know if it's more disturbing than the content of the Mueller report, which was also not sufficient to get Democrats on board. So Democrats really need to look at this right now and say, do we let the American people decide what to do with this president, or do we make yet another push for impeachment when the American public seems not to really perceive these to be threats to democracy, even though experts have absolutely said they are, and our founders would be very upset about it. There is a political angle here and it's not necessarily beneficial for them to again re-engage in this. But I do think we need to see the transcript. I think we need more information. Could end up being beneficial I think everybody's for the president, in favor, you know, could not. I think everybody's in favor of that. There's a separate conversation we should be having about whether or not it's appropriate to release these types of phone calls and what changes based on this. Uh, you know, and I'm not saying that there's anything there, Jesse, but in the Democrats' previous attempts to go after President Trump, there have been so many false starts, and they have failed to, you know, really get the impeachment issue front and center, get the caucus, the Democratic Party unified behind the idea of impeachment. And I think there are so many Democrats hoping that that still materializes that, like Lauren said, they read in between the lines or try to read between the lines on Nancy Pelosi's letter, but I don't think anything's changed based on this, and I don't think anything's going to. 
Well, even DNI said that when they reviewed it, it wasn't of urgent concern and it didn't fall under the DNI purview because it wasn't even one of their staffers. It wasn't even somebody who worked for them. So, okay, go ahead, have this person go testify and they, it becomes a he said, she said. They didn't even hear this information themselves. So people saying, well, we have to know. Really? There are massive private conversations that go on between world leaders every single day and that's the reason they go on in the White House. Apparently there were 20 witnesses to this phone call. Apparently the State Department already reviewed the transcripts. Apparently there was no red flags that went off by any of this because of the simple fact that this is obviously another takedown of President Trump by the Democrats. Go ahead, bring them forward if that's what they want because look how well Mueller did in his hearing. He couldn't even answer half the yeah. questions. It didn't even look like that he even completed the investigation. He stammered through the bulk of his own testimony. So if they really want to keep throwing this out there, they make themselves look incapable. And meanwhile, they're only drawing more attention to Joe Biden and his nefarious dealings overseas, such as in the Ukraine, right. also in China. And we also have a few in others China that too. are on his list of where he profited off of foreign governments. Yeah. Do Democrats really want another repeat of what we saw last week with the uh, Corey Lewandowski hearing? That didn't go very well uh, for Jerry Nadler and Democrats. And I don't think the American public feel like they're getting their tax dollars worth out of these uh, hearings, these show trials we're having uh, on Capitol Hill Weekly now. All right. Stay with us. we got more to come here. When we come back, Elizabeth Warren is surging in Iowa. Why this could mean the end of the road for Joe Biden. We'll be right back at this. <laughs> 